Welcome to Discover Barnstable, the official podcast of the town of Barnstable. A podcast where you can meet the people who steward the programs and services for the town of Barnstable that connects us to our quality of life. We invite you to join the conversation as we navigate municipal government and our community pathways to help you discover Barnstable. I'm Paula Hersey, and today I am joined with my fellow co-host and tour guide, Liz Hartsgrove. Hi. As we (laughs) dive into this week's topic of discussion, vitals, with our town guest, town clerk, and quirk. And I have to say, right off the bat, this is... I just love saying that. <laughs> so I'm going to say it again. Town Quirk. No, Town Clerk. Ann Quirk. While Anne has been employed by the town since 2011, her family has been located on the Cape since 1950. Her favorite Cape pastimes as a youth include winter ice skating on the cranberry bogs, swimming in ponds during the summer, digging for clams, and enjoying family time at Storyland, where the mall sits today. And Quirk Town Clerk is here in the podcast room with us. Welcome. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks for joining us. And again, this is really exciting because Vital Records talk about something that is so important. Why is it important, actually? Um, I know, but maybe our listeners don't know. What exactly are Vital Records? Vital records are the births, deaths, and marriages that have taken place in the town of Barnstable, and in some cases, beyond that. We have a requirement as town clerks to make sure that our records are correct for all of the people who live in the town of Barnstable, and that includes births, deaths, and marriages. Sometimes people are transported to another hospital, which means the, the, the birth doesn't happen here. However, we usually get those copies too. So we try to, we try to keep up with that, whether it's Boston or Plymouth or Falmouth, we try to make sure we have them. So if they're residents of the town of Barnstable, you do maintain that even if, let's for example, so let's actually rewind a little bit here. Um, I had, I'm not a resident of Barnstable, however, I had my two children at Cape Cod Hospital, and that is located in Hyannis within the town of Barnstable. So do you have records of my children's births, or do I have to go back to the communities where I resided at that time? Actually, we have them. Anybody that is born at Cape Cod Hospital, that birth record has to come through our office first. So we have all of those because they happened in the town of Barnstable. We try to share them with the other towns, um, but it's up to the individual parent who signs off on that record saying, yes, I want my town to have a copy of this too. And if they miss that little block on the paperwork that they're filling out, then sometimes we're the only ones that have it. And... Our town has been incorporated since 1639. Does that mean that in the vault where you are (laughs) and in the vault, does that mean that you have records dating back to almost, or yes, to 1639? Yes, we do. Um, We have all of the records since the town was incorporated. And prior to that, in some cases, depending upon which church the individuals, the parents went to, to uh, allow the minister or priest or whomever to have notification that they had a child. And that's how it used to happen. It went through the churches first. And once we were incorporated, now we have them. Wow, that's amazing that there's that much history out there but let's before we talk about Anne in the vault and the history of vital (laughs) records let's get some real kind of real world examples for folks of why they need to get these records or apply for these records so they can do certain life altering events Mm -hmm. right um so let's just take a couple off the bat um yeah well just recently so my daughter who's now 17 but when she was 16 
Um, she enrolled in driver's ed, but we needed a copy of her birth certificate. And she was born at Cape Cod Hospital. So I had to come to you, right? Yes. Yeah. And, oh, my gosh. She's on the road now <laughs> driving? No, not yet. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> but... She is learning how to drive. So um, I needed to get a copy of her birth certificate. So what is the process of somebody that needs, for example, their child or even a, a past generation's worth of just records for proving of citizenship or anything like that? How do they obtain a birth certificate? It's really very simple. Mm. We have an online portal now. And it's right on that home page that you can click on online portals. I love it. And you click on that and it takes you to births, deaths, and marriages. It takes you to the town clerk's office. You can do your dog license. You can get a vital record. You can do all kinds of things. Um, if you're local and you want to come in, we, we, we welcome to, you know, we're welcoming anyone to come in to, and we love seeing them. But it's sometimes takes time out of your day and if you don't have that kind of time if you go online order that uh, birth record or death record or marriage record and just follow the prompts on the online portal we mail it out the next day so you can make the payment for it yep okay right and it, it does cost and it, you know a small fee right there is a small fee but yeah. if you were going to for many years and we still do we still take those requests in the mail but we ask you to include a stamp self-addressed envelope. So it is a $10 fee for a vital record. If you put a stamp on an envelope, it's the same thing as if you went through the portal. It's it's basically the same amount of money. But it's a lot... <laughs> a lot quicker yeah. and a lot easier for you. That's amazing. So um, the next... You mentioned birth... We've talked already a little bit about birth certificates, but the next layer of it is actually marriage licenses of, you know, somebody's life path. And um, the marriage licenses, so is that for people who get married in here or in Barnstable, or is it for Barnstable resident? Is it very similar to <laughs> a birth certificate, or is it a little different? It's very different. Okay. So... Um, Perhaps you were uh, not living in Barnstable when you registered to be be married. Okay, you went into a town hall, probably close to your the town where you were living, and you filled out your paperwork, and then you decided you wanted to get married at uh, a beach in Barnstable, which is a lovely place to get married, and you call us back. Oh, and you did this 15 years ago. Now, you probably don't remember that you filled out the original paperwork in Yarmouth. Yarmouth would be the keeper of that record because that's where the, the process started. So in perpetuity, that's where the, your record will be. We also share these records with the state so you can actually contact the state of Massachusetts in order to get your vital record, whether it's a birth, a death, or a marriage. However, the cost is more than double the cost that we charge. So any of those activities, as long as it, it's within the town of Barnstable, you can attain it when it actually occurred and you have the license for it. So marriages, a lot of people come to Barnstable to get married because this is, as you said, there's so many beautiful places to, to really enhance that special moment in someone's life in the family's experience so let's somebody from Colorado let's just say wants to get married in August here and they call you up a couple of weeks because they decided or even a couple of months later or I mean before and what's the process for that well I love it when they do that because there's a whole list of things they need to know um, and I send them an email right away with that information. They have to take out in person, the couple has to take out their intention to marry, which gives them a license. But they can do that in any city or town in Massachusetts. But it has to be in Massachusetts if you want to get married in Massachusetts. So people coming from and we have it all the time i've i've married two couples that came from ireland 
But, but again, they had to come over here and fill out the paperwork first. And then three days later, they can actually have their license to marry. Okay, so they could be in Boston, fill out the intention. So it's a two-step process, basically. Mm-hmm. You fill out the intention form, and that can be anywhere, regardless if you're in Boston or in Provincetown, anywhere, right? Mm-hmm. And then they can go get married in any town, and that is when the marriage license is in that particular town. So if they choose to get married at Calmus or anywhere, even the town green um, or Barnstable Village, then they get their marriage license through here, town hall. Is that right? No. Okay. They then get, that's that's why we're having this discussion. They get their marriage license. If they fill out the paperwork in Provincetown, then Provincetown is going to give them the marriage license. They're going to bring that with them if they decide to get married here in Hyannis. And we then fill up, or the justice of the peace, or the minister, or whomever they, they go to to yeah. get married, they fill out the bottom part of that marriage record or license. It gets sent back to Provincetown. Okay. And then Provincetown has to complete it. So it's not a completed record until the town clerk signs off on it in Provincetown. That's, so yeah, don't lose that on that special day. <laughs> no, that would be a really bad thing if you did. <laughs> right. And, and, and one of the questions I have, because it, it's happened um, to a family member, what happens when there is a mistake on a vital record? <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh, it's it's not a pretty thing. Yeah, it right? doesn't so, sound like so it. So a, a child's name is spelled wrong, or um, there is uh, omitted uh, information on a prior marriage on a marriage record, or the place of death wasn't recorded properly. How do things like that? Number one, maybe get caught, but two, how do they get corrected? Uh, <laughs> let's say, um, let, let's start with or a birth Or are you, you could be the resource for that. They'd just call you and you would tell them. Yes, I mean, you, you'd start, if, if the birth record came through Cape Cod Hospital to us, then we would have to work with Cape Cod Hospital and we would have to work with the families and figure out what the error is because before you leave the hospital they make sure you go over that because that is going to be the record of your child's birth so if there is a misspelling or you know something as simple as a misspelling we can usually correct that and it doesn't take too long okay um once that record as i said all of our records once they're completed by the end of that month we send them all to boston to the Registry of Vital Records, which is located in Dorchester, actually. And they then keep this, the copies of all of the towns and cities. They keep all those records as well. Wow. Now if someone brings a problem to us, it's a, it's a multi-stepped process in order for us to correct it. Right. Because we don't correct ours, we have to correct the one that's in... The, the Registry of Vital Records as well, and it has to start there and work its way back to us. Right. And and, and it seems so important, uh, you know, we, we take these things for granted because, you know, the, the, the processes have been in place for eons, right, for birth records and marriage records and things like that. But a lot of these records are used in some of the most daily type of things that you need to do either as an adult or as somebody who's settling in a state for a loved one um you know where are those scenarios you know you must deal with an enormous amount of stories um that that come through the town clerk's office in order to get those those records you know the 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 social security card you need a birth certificate now with real id for driver's licenses you need different uh records if you are one generation removed from canada you can get a record of your grandmother who's come from canada and become a citizen of canada i didn't know that my, mm-hmm. my husband now does um 
But that vault. So that's this is I'm I'm, I'm in that roundabout <laughs> way of, of of getting you in the vault, and um, there is this craze that's out there right now that's been the past twenty years, which is people looking into their past mm. and finding their roots. Um, well, I, I'm not quite sure that you're Henry and finding the roots, um, uh, the PBS special, but. We have been able, I've been able to go back. I've been doing some genealogy for my family, have found records for the Mayflower. I am actually a native Cape Cotter. Um, my family literally came over on the Mayflower and landed in East Ham. Um, but when you talk about those records and those vaults, how do people kind of use those tools that you provide to help their genealogy quests? Do they have to download everything? Are you starting to digitize any of this? That's a great question. Uh, I would love to have digitized all of that stuff, but it is not yet done. And a lot of our records from the early 1600s are handwritten. Oh, my goodness. So they don't digitize well. Uh, and, and that is an issue. I think that's a huge issue for us. We do do a lot of genealogy, and we get requests all the time, and it does take a lot of time, so there is an extra fee involved in that. Um, we do welcome people to come in and sit down in the office, and they can look through the books as long as they have gloves on. Um, they're welcome to look through the books as well. But we don't, uh, you know, with COVID, that, with that kind of, went away for a while but we, we are still doing it and we will we will allow that to happen and that's not a problem um it's looking at these old records that we have uh it's trying to figure out where we're going to find it because the original records were set up in one book and it might be decisions that were made it might be um the listing of families it didn't specifically say this child, uh, this is a birth record of this child. No, they just wrote it in a book, and then they put the dates next to it. So it usually was is under a whole family, but it takes time to really do that that research going way back because it's it's tough stuff. It's just not readily available. All right, and I want to make a distinction too because we also have a registry of deeds in Barnstable, but it's Barnstable County. And a lot of these records, and this is from my own research, um, are in probate. Mm. They're literally, that's where you're finding people's names and how many children that they had, what they were left in those wills, those last wills. Um, so probate is has records as well, but they're associated with the county and not the town. Right, and Sturgis Library has quite a few records too so they have they have a really good section at Sturgis Library so it's not just us there were towns that had fires that lost records um, they don't have them all in Boston going back that far but uh, I think they have back to like 1891 in wow. Boston but prior to that you have to go to the individual towns and it's it's great when you know what town but but not always people if they ended up in Barnstable, but they might have started out in East Ham or Orleans or somewhere else, you know, it's 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 really tough to, sometimes to find that stuff. But we love that. That's that's a great part of the job. That's Fantastic. a that's a sounds like actually a really fun part of the job is yeah. helping them find the missing pieces to those puzzles. And you know, it sounds like we have such a rare gem the vault that is here that you are the keeper of it's not every town doesn't have that record of going back to the start of the whole incorporation and you know that's the one thing wonderful about massachusetts is that really besides virginia we have the longest incorporated communities and there's not too many people that can say that they're from a community that started in 1639 and it's you know over 400 years it's almost 400 years old so it's um you have a lot of valuables that the legacy the history the just the importance of people that made an impact not just here but possibly even the world now and what are some of the famous 
records of people that you have in your uh, in your keepsake well down there. we have a rebellion record which is something that not most towns have what a is, rebellion record? what is rebellion what is that 1800s well i'm i'm gonna have to save that for another time oh oh uh, you can't uh, do that uh, to uh, us uh, 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 you have to see it i'm calling no fair you, you have to see it because we have had it uh we've we have sent it out to make sure that the the pages are have been deacidified. Okay. Because everybody's hand makes a print, whether you realize it or not. There's oils on your hand, and every right. time you touch one of those linen pages, it it actually leaves an impression that eventually, over time, ends up blotting out what you're trying to find. Um, so we have had this book uh, taken care of, and as a matter of fact, from a company that we've used for years as well as all the other town clerks, too. And they've never seen anything like this rebellion <gasps> record. So it's something you have to see. That's a Channel 18 that, show if yeah, I ever heard one. You have to see it. I definitely want to know more about this. You have me intrigued. My curiosity <laughs> is, like, going wild right now. <laughs> well, I'm glad because it's one of those rare mm. things that we have. To have. Um, we also have... Oh gosh, we there's so much in that vault. <laughs> I can't even begin. I have the listing of people of women who registered to vote in 1920 <gasps> when women got the vote. Oh, wow. I have a book that has their no. signatures in the book. The suffragists. That is fantastic. Oh my goodness, yes. how wonderful that is. It is a wonderful thing. I mean, I got I got I got real gems in that in that uh, vault. Paula, that sounds like it's a yeah, definitely. Start of a, a series. Start and, of a Channel 18 yeah. series. And in the vaults. Look look what we did. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's Man, fantastic. That is wonderful. And just for our closing here, just remind people how they can get these vital records. Lickety split right online. Lickety sp- split right <laughs> online. Go to the town of Barnstable. That was a little tough. Eh? <laughs> Go to the town of Barnstable and click on that nice little icon that we have that says online portal. And when you jump on that, you'll see town clerk is on there. Just click on us and it'll take you right through. Fantastic. That's Thanks wonderful. so much for joining us. Yeah. And talk about lickety split. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? This is my oh. rapid question. <laughs> okay. It's, it's chocolate peanut butter. And where Ooh. do you get chocolate? Where's your favorite place to get chocolate? It could be even the grocery store, but I'm not. Four there C's. is no judge here. Four C's. Four C's. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I agree with you that one. <laughs> but when it comes to ice cream, this is a judge-free zone, I have to say. You know, when you need ice cream, you're going to get it anywhere. And really, but that is a wonderful place. And it's really a gem for our community so i highly agree with chocolate peanut butter Mm -hmm. thank you Mm -hmm. (laughs) thank you and thanks for spending time with us and our listeners and listening to discover barnstable the official podcast of the town of barnstable we hope you found a new understanding of how your municipal government works to protect engage and enact for you and our community be sure to drop us a line at podcast at town barnstable.ma.us and let us know what you would like to learn next. Till next time, go discover Barnstable.